It's been a sad day. I had to say goodbye to the... To the Senol ASM6s. After they were so good to me. But they had to go back home. I can't even talk. Yeah, okay, let's talk about them. About a a while back, Sean from Sinol hit me up and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing a pair of their studio monitors. I said, sure, I like speakers, I like gear, go ahead and send them over. So he did. I spent a few weeks with him, really got to know him, and now I'm reviewing them. You're looking at the Sinol ASM6s, and I had filmed a whole bunch of me talking to the camera in typical review fashion, but in typical me fashion, I messed it all up, and so all I've got left are these wonderful shots of the speakers in action. So here they are, they're the Sinol ASM6s. Usually that six has something to do with the speaker size. In this case, they're six and a half inch woofers with a separate tweeter, and they're rated for frequency reproduction all the way down to 38 hertz. It's nice that they get right into that sub 40 range because that pretty much covers all your bases for practical low frequency reproduction. If you're doing a lot of work in the 20s and 30s or high teens or something, you probably already have a dedicated subwoofer to handle those super low frequencies. So using these speakers, I was not wanting for bass. I do have a dedicated subwoofer, but I left it off for the first week and a half so I could really get a feel for how these speakers handle bass. And if you're primarily dealing with hip-hop like I do, you want to make sure you have that accurate representation of your low end. Are these speakers going to give you that room-shaking bass that gets you super pumped up when you're working on tracks and you add some sub bass that just makes everything go crazy? No, but you will be able to hear it and you will be able to mix it. And like any speakers, you just have to learn what they're capable of and what they sound like. And what was great about these speakers is that took no time at all. Within half an hour of getting these set up, I felt as comfortable as I had ever been on my Yamahas, which I've been mixing on for five, six years now. And I just thought it would take a whole lot longer to get one, accustomed to these speakers, and two, get to a place where I was enjoying what I was hearing. And those both happened within the hour. I was very surprised. Some of the first things I noticed were the highs. There was a lot more detail than I was used to. They were crisp, but they weren't harsh. They were nice and airy, but they weren't overbearing. And that detail in the high end just really contributed to a very detailed sound feel. And I just felt like I was getting a lot more information about what was going on, whether I was just listening to music or mixing music, anything at all, I just had a much clearer picture of what was happening. So let's talk a little bit about the physical design of the speaker. They've got the one input and it is a balanced XLR input. I was worried at first because I don't have any XLR outputs, I just run unbalanced quarter inch. But luckily in the box, they do include not only an XLR to XLR cable, but an XLR to RCA as well. And if you're running quarter inch, as long as you've got some RCA to quarter inch adapters, you're good. Although I do feel it would have been slightly more useful to have an XLR to quarter inch cable instead of the XLR to RCA. But what do I know? I didn't do the research. Now on the back of the speaker, there are a few controls for tweaking the speaker to better fit your room. You've got three frequency cut or boost options, one for the high range, one for the mid range, and one for the low range as well as a separate high pass option to cut any low frequencies if you are going to be running these monitors with a dedicated subwoofer. It gives you some options on where your crossover point's going to be and helps you get the best possible sound that way. And outside of using the high pass option when I did turn on my dedicated subwoofer, I didn't really have to tweak things very much. I was happy pretty quickly with how they sounded. But even more important than enjoying how they sound while you're working on them is getting mixes that translate. Meaning that if something sounds good on your speakers at home, you want it to sound good anywhere else. You want it to sound good on a laptop, on TV speakers, anywhere at all. And even though that does come down a lot to an individual engineer's skills, a huge part of that is the speakers. And I'm happy to report that anything I mixed on these speakers, anything I got sounding good on these speakers, I was perfectly happy with in the car, on a laptop, wherever I heard it. I was into it and that's really the test for whether or not I like a pair of speakers. So can I recommend these? Yes, I can. I was very happy with the speakers and I was very sad to see them go. They sent me a review pair and I had to send them back when I was done. So on the subject of value, I'm not really sure how much I can weigh in. Seeing as that I did not purchase these speakers and speakers I have purchased in the past, I got crazy good deals on on Craigslist. So my speaker value meter isn't really calibrated very well, but I was happy with them. Mixes turned out great. They sounded good everywhere. They were great to listen to music on. I was just very happy all around. So this has been the Sinol ASM6s, and I think you should definitely check them out.